All right, hey everyone, this is Ash. Welcome back to the King's Speech. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to welcome back to the King's Speech and welcome to uh, another Musings uh, video. I think I mentioned a while back in a channel update or some of my other videos for those of you that aren't already aware. Uh, the Musings videos on this channel are basically going to be like ones where I talk about uh, just sporadic topics or thoughts or things that strike my fancy or you know things I want to comment on or find annoying for whatever uh, so I just want to name the musings as a general thing just be like yeah this is going to be uh, kind of off the cuff thoughts I have about uh, whatever strikes my fancy at the moment uh, so with that said in this one specifically I want to talk about a tweet I saw circulating yesterday uh, regarding a sexist comment that Akira Toriyama, the creator of Dragon Ball, uh, had made in an interview when the Dragon Ball Super, uh, excuse me, Broly movie had come out. Uh, I think that was relatively recently. I want to say it came out 2019, 2018, sometime around then. Although it's not too, too old, uh, an interview. Uh, but I wanted to talk about it because it really, really pissed me off and initially i was just gonna post a twitter throw of my th thoughts uh, quickly on it i would have figured there's kind of a lot of stuff i wanted to cover with regards to this topic specifically uh so i thought a short a relatively short video would be a better format to kind of get those thoughts out uh for it rather than twitter uh so with that said let's get into it uh, so before I dive into the main top, like the main stuff of this video, like my thoughts specifically, uh, I'll read out the initial tweet first, as well as the uh, uh, Toriyama's quote. Toriyama's quote. Uh, I'll link the tweet in the description below for anyone that wants to either retweet it, see it for themselves, uh, etc. Uh, so the person that initially had posted. Uh, the tweet had said, you know, Toriyama's comment about women here really rubs me the wrong way here. Uh, I've been an active participant in Dragon Ball fandom for over 20 years. Uh, but because I'm a woman by interest in Dragon Ball, somehow because I'm a boy at heart, what? And so, boy, all right. So, oh, man. So the first, you know, the first part of the interview isn't really... Uh, relevant to the overall video itself. Uh, so I'll kind of, because it's mostly just uh, Toriyama talking about you now, he's mostly hands off with the anime. And uh, at the end, it's like how he's impressed with the all uh, the work the staff did on it and everything else. Uh, so I really want to just hold on to the last part because that's really the specific thing I want to address. So Toriyama said at the end uh, of this quote, like to all boys, adult men with the hearts of boys, and the perhaps few in number women who understand the hearts of boys, by all means, please see the movie and get fired up. For me personally, the work Dragon Ball is nothing but fighting, which to be perfectly frank, isn't something I like all that much. But for some reason, it's this really fun, mysterious work that gets me excited when I'm coming up with a story. Like that, I'm now an old geezer through and through. Uh, but I'm also coming up with ideas for my next work. Let's meet again sometime in my next work. Akira Toriyama. <laughs> it's amazing. Actually, no, no, it's not, no way. It's not actually amazing. It's just super normal, but no less frustrating how ignorant, privileged, cis hetero men are. And this quote really is a prime example of that. You know, and it's not just Toriyama that has been parroting this kind of empty buzzword of, you know, the heart of boys. Because uh, Ichiro Oda, again, another privileged, influential, cis-hetero uh, mangaka, uh, that writes the, you know, super popular pirate series One Piece. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with him and his work. Uh, but he said in an interview, you know, like I can't remember how long ago it was, but he said in an interview that he writes his series uh, for middle-aged boys or, you know, uh, for whatever he himself would have enjoyed when he was a teenager. 
And then I think more recently, Shueisha, which is the group that publishes, you know, Shonen Jump magazine, among others, uh, they were asked whether women could become editors at Shonen Jump. And uh, they said, and I quote, this was from an ANN article. Uh, let me quickly just dig it up because it looks like it closed the thing. Uh, give me a second here. Da, da, da. There. So this is like Huffington. Like so, this was uh, published on uh, November eighth, twenty nineteen. So not too too long ago. Uh, so the quote, uh, so the post basically says, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, our company conducts seminars at a number of university campuses. Regarding the matter of female editors at Jump, our statement is as follows. It is not unprecedented. There are women at Jump Plus, and publications like Young Jump have had female editors in the past. Women's fashion magazines need people who understand women's fashion regardless of gender, so for a shonen magazine, it's important to understand the heart of boys. Yeah. Also, new recruits to the company are not selected based on the department. We hire a suitable company for the people as a whole, etc., etc. And so, like they even note in the in the article itself, Huffington Post notes the Suez did not actually make it clear whether women can become editors at Weekly Shonen uh, Jump. And again, I'm just. Or was it? Yeah, so look, I'm just in awe of the absolute lack of awareness and entitlement and privilege on display where they can just boldly make such an ignorant comment like this, you know, blatantly just say dumb shit like this with a straight face, right? And it gets worse because in the same in an in interview, uh, I'll link it in the description below so anyone that wants to kind of uh, read the entire thing in its entirety can read it on, uh, whenever they want to get a chance. Uh, the deputy editor at the time, I think when this interview was published, whose name was uh, Kohei Onishi, I don't know if he's still currently the deputy editor or not, basically said that Weekly Shonen Jump has never had an editor in its entire, or never had a uh, female editor. Uh, where was it? Yeah, so he said, uh, da, da, da. yeah, so he's never had a single female editor in his entire history. Uh, so this is an radio interview post in October 2018 to celebrate the magazine's 50th anniversary. And he also said that the workplace was like a boys high boys only high school. So just like let that sink in for a moment that this magazine with 50 year history in all of that time has never had a single female editor at all. And it's just like, and you think that would that would be like the worst part of it? Like, but it gets even worse than that, because back in two thousand fourteen, uh, the Weekly Shonen Jump deputy editor at that time, who was a uh, Soichi Ida, said that there were no female editors working at the magazine, uh, because he explained that Jump's main target is boys about middle school aged, and when asked if he would hire female editors if he were editor in chief, he stated. No, I'd make the department even more manly. And it's just... Like, how do you say something like that with a straight face and not think you sound super ignorant? Right? Now, like, this should have been more than enough reason... To see why Shonen Jump and, you know, the culture of male entitlement and dominance is garbage and we should just completely overhaul that system, throw it in a dumpster, set it on fire, put that flaming dumpster in the ocean at the bottom of the biggest trench that we can find and just completely eliminate all traces of it. But let's dive into the sexism, the misogyny, and the ignorance behind this overused and empty buzzword of, 
you know, the heart of boys or understanding the heart of boys and what it really means. So what does it mean? Nothing. It literally means nothing. Like I said, the phrase is really nothing more than an empty buzzword that's used to be, that's nothing more than really sexist gatekeeping drivel that reinforces and perpetuates outdated gender stereotypes about who can like and appreciate certain stories of certain genres, you know, with certain themes in them. And if we're being honest, and you know, as the excerpt from the interviews above show, the main reason this argument or stance or whatever you want to call it is used is so that men can get away with being sexist and misogynistic in their work by claiming that you know they're appealing to the inherent nature or desires of kids at that age, you know, usually by sexualizing women uh, in their series and teaching men that you know their desires, their needs, their wants, etc., supersede the autonomy of women. And that women really only exist to serve or support them and their narrative arcs. And, you know, and really to kind of center them and their needs in the world. And kind of like normalize the attitude of like, you know, you are the most important person in the world. And everyone else should understand how great and awesome you are, you know, and how how much they should love wanting to be with you and shit like that. The thing is, like, you know, Ichiro Oda, like, One Piece's creator, even once jokingly said, like, you know, jokingly said in a response to a question from a reader in one of his little question corner uh, things in his series, uh, when they asked him, you know, why are so many of the mothers in your series dead? And he responded with, oh, they're dead because mother is the antithesis of adventure. It's like, ha ha ha, get it? Because mothers like, or that, that's why they keep dying in my series. And this was also the same man when he was asked by a reader how to draw women, you know, the same way that Oda does. He responded that all you need to do is draw two circles and a little X as a base. And there you have like your base model for a woman and then you can add in all the features onto that. And like, that's all you need. You know, because that's how you get the over-sexualized, over-exaggerated hourglass, like, you know, big tittied, small waist women that he draws in his series. And then he went on to say that, you know, drawing women like this will get you a lot of complaints, but, you know, to stay strong and persevere despite all of that. And it gets even better because in his quest in corners, he also joked about how a 16-year-old character he drew in his series... Uh, you know, wearing a very skimpy chainmail bikini uh, a la Red Sonia. Uh, everyone can kind of Google that if you don't know who Red Sonia is. But she was basically wearing like a chainmail bikini. And he was making jokes about, you know, how that character doesn't wear panties and how he'd love to show her having a nip slip and oh, you know what it would look like if she suddenly slipped and her skirt went flying up. Be like, oh, it would be so naughty. Right? So I think that should kind of give you an idea of exactly what kind of person Oda himself is. And before we get to kind of the inevitable, you know, a few bad apples that Shonen Jump doesn't mean, the entire argument or the entire department is trash, and that everyone that publishes in there is trash, remember that the entire phrase for that is one bad apple spoils the bunch. And it's pretty evident from the editor's interview that there's an ingrained culture of misogyny and sexism at Shueisha and Shonen Jump. And let's not pretend that it doesn't affect the kind of artists they decide to pick up and the stories they publish. Like, if we look at it, like the most recent uh, one, I think it's been all over the news, everyone should be aware of it. But for those of you that aren't, uh, there was a series called Act Age that was published in the magazine. And it was a team between a male storyteller and a female artist uh, that write in the series together. Uh, the male artist was 
uh, yeah, the male artist was caught basically groping minors around high schools. So he'd be going around on his bicycle, groping them, and then riding away. Uh, so when he got caught, uh, you know, like the police, he got caught by the police. He admitted to it entirely. So Shueisha decided to, you know, completely axe the series, uh, completely remove it from their vault, stop publishing and all that. But this is also the same company that published, you know, Roron Kenshin is still continuing to publish it. Uh, and the author of that series, uh, Sh uh, Watsuki, I can't remember what the hell his full name is. Uh, he's a convicted pedophile who had so much child porn in his offices that when the police went and raided and bought it all out, they suspected intent to distribute because of how much child porn he had stored in there. And he got away with the equivalent of a $2,000 fine. Uh, he's basically back at work at the magazine. His series are still continuing uh, to be published. Uh, Oda, who Watsuki used to mentor, even did like an interview or something for some kind of special panel they were doing for his series recently. Uh, another author, Shimoburi, Shimoburo Watts, or no, what the fuck is his name? The guy that wrote uh, Toriko, no, it's Shimoburo something. Give me a second. Yeah, Mitsuhoshi Shimabukuro. He was caught, I think, twice or three times convicted of, you know, soliciting a minor for sex. Again, he basically got off scot-free. His He had multiple works published in the magazine, even after all this went down. So when you have a culture that promotes and allows these kinds of men to thrive you cannot pretend like you know it's complete that these the men you cannot pretend that the culture there does not protect and promote these kinds of behaviors and shield these men from these kinds of consequences all right so like obviously you know shonen jump has a problem with misogyny and sexism and a bunch of other stuff that you can't just pretend doesn't exist but let's put you know all that aside for the moment and address like you know some of the other popular arguments that people try to use to try to get you know try to toss out whenever they try to defend this issue the first of which is this idea that you know well it's a magazine for boys so of course it's going to have a lot of boys or men in the series and cast. Of course a lot of the main characters are going to be boys. Or you know this idea that Shonen Jump's motto of friendship, effort, victory is something that can only inherently appeal to boys or men. And you know that women somehow can't understand it because it's, you know, it's just too, uh, it's too alien a concept for them. And like the thing is, no one is saying that boys can't have stories, you know, that don't feature. Yeah, so no one's saying boys can't have stories that feature, you know, boys or their struggle, boys or men and their struggles, and you know, especially ones that promote positive themes and messages, like the aforementioned friendship, effort, victory, all that stuff. But let's also not pretend like 99% of most media that's published every year either features or centers cis-hetero men and their struggles and needs and the, their struggles, needs, wants, dreams, etc. You know, over literally every other demographic. Let's not pretend like, you know, women, people of color, uh, anyone that's LGBT hasn't had to grow up reading these same stories, you know, that center a very, very narrow demographic, you know, of the aforementioned cis hetero white men. And that we've had to empathize and sympathize with these stories of these men and their struggles while the inverse has not been true you know cis hetero men 
will whine and they'll cry and they'll get angry and they'll get mad and they'll rage whenever a piece of media with a main character, you know, that main character that struggles with something that isn't reflective of their own experiences. And whenever this these kinds of works are promoted or published, you know, uh, no matter like how rare it is to see something like this, immediately these people will be like, oh, how dare they? Oh, how dare they, you know, try to get this work out there and try to push, you know, their agenda on us. Oh, how come they're trying to get me to watch the stories and trying to do so much marketing for it? You know, all that kind of crap. Yet, if someone that isn't a cis hetero person, you know, tries to do the same thing, if we try to act the same way, we try to complain, hey, you know, I wish there was more stories, uh, like say, you know, Toucan Birdie, which is a perfect example, a Netflix show, you know, about middle-aged women and kind of their specific personal experiences and struggles uh, that was really very well received uh, by the audience but got canceled like very very early on uh, while a show like Bojack Horseman which is about you know this asshole uh, asshole anthropomorphic horse you know got what was it five or six seasons I think uh, six complete seasons you know about how he went around abusing abusing uh, his friends family everyone else you know just being a complete dick and how he was kind of uh, how he's given the opportunity to show a nuanced portrayal of you know this kind of person got so much tough screen time to kind of show those stories whereas the ones about these two women wasn't given the same opportunity right and then when people complain about you know, shows like that getting canceled or seeing more media like that that finally speaks to them and represents them then suddenly you know it's when cis hetero men will dive in with the oh you know you're just being entitled or you need to be happy with you know this one movie that came out that had you know the that featured these themes or these kinds of other diverse demographics you know what more do you want like again black panther being a perfect example people will be like oh you know why do you need more marvel movies with you know a black superhero this didn't you already get black panther it's like you know what more do you really want and the thing is you know we're told to be happy that you know you got this one popular generalized movie about you know this over generalized broad experience uh, for you know this one demographic despite the fact that every year there's hundreds of interchangeable media with cis hetero men coming out every year you know facing similar struggles similar themes messages whatever different uh, with a different coat of paint on it so to speak right and that's really kind of the crux of the argument here you know what the whole debate is about is that cis hetero men believe they're entitled to stories that center their own experiences and struggles and are raised being told that they pos cannot possibly relate you know to stories about experiences that are not their own because they'll find it boring or unrelatable or whatever and yet literally every other demographic is expected to do just that right like we're expected to watch you know a war story about this white boy you know white as bread white boy going through these struggles trying to get back to his family things like that and there's at least four or five of those put out every single year right and yet there's never one that says you know center say a person of color or a brown person or a black person or someone that's gay in those kinds of you know stories or things and at a certain point it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and the reason why cis hetero men are unable to, empath unable to empathize with anyone that isn't part of their group because the stories and lessons they're exposed to 
condition them to be selfish and because they don't know any better at that age they internalize what they're taught and becomes a perpetual cycle of you know cis hetero men telling other cis hetero men hey you know you are the most important your struggles are the most meaningful you know uh, you have a lot harder than everyone else uh, don't let anyone tell you any different and this reminds me like there was a tweet that was going around a year ago and I just tried really hard uh, to find it either Google or Twitter and I was unable to dig it up which is kind of a shame because I really want to link it down below uh, but there's a tweet going around uh, where an author pointed out that you know whenever she went to schools uh, to do signings and book tours etc like to promote her book the biggest problem she faced you know trying to get boys to pick up and read her book wasn't actually like you know the little boys themselves you know it wasn't that hard for her to try to get them to be interested in the story she was telling you know about this princess uh, or whatnot the biggest struggle she faced was with the parents of the children because she noted that you know whenever a boy tried to pick up her book because he was interested in because something in the cover appealed to him or something about the story appealed to him uh, usually the parent and this was either this was both I think split between uh, women and men uh, the parent would tell them to put it back you know because they wouldn't enjoy it or like oh you're a boy you wouldn't enjoy a story about princesses and things like that and so she noted that kids aren't born with inherent biases about you know what they'll enjoy what they won't enjoy what interests they'll have what interests they won't have uh things like that uh she pointed out you know that the biases are taught to them by the adults who have internalized them and are now basically passing it on to the next generation and that's really what shonen jump is doing when it tries to push this you know heart of boys bullcrap or when you have these ignorant male authors kind of on parroting the same thing and believing that oh you know like women can't possibly understand you know what the struggles of men or what they're going through or what their thought process is and things like that they're basically training men to think that stories about women of col women people of color you know any mix of the aforementioned uh, anyone that's lgbt cannot possibly be exciting oh i should also mention like anyone that's also you know non-binary trans etc all of those uh different demographics as well cannot possibly be exciting because how can you relate to them you know if i'm a cis hetero man like how can i possibly relate to you know a black lesbian woman you know like it's not i didn't share the same experiences as her so how can i possibly relate to you know the struggle she went through or how can I relate to the story of, you know, say, uh, a brown man that, you know, decides he wants to be, you know, the world's greatest superhero or whatever. And the thing is, like, there's nothing particularly gendered about the stories that run in Shonen Jump. Like, none of the struggles, the main characters, you know, in Black Clover or My Hero Academia or One Piece or whatever... They're not particularly gendered and nothing would be drastically different if their genders were swapped. You know, if Asta suddenly became a woman that also wanted to become, you know, the Wizard King. Yeah, if you wanted to make it, you know, kind of like realistic in your fantasy series and talk about sexism and the issues and kind of like ish related issues like that in your series. Like, yeah, sure, there'd be some mild other differences in the character's journey. But there wouldn't be anything radically different about the character themselves or their dreams or their personality or anything that would suddenly just change if their genders were swapped or wouldn't make them any less compelling. And the lessons in our themes in these series are pretty universal and can apply to literally anyone. Like it's not something that's specific, you know, someone that's specifically born male or born female or anything like that something that only they could relate to you know because they grew up in a specific set of uh, conditions or whatever 
And like, if we're being real, it's not like any of these works are either particularly profound. Because uh, even Toriyama admitted, you know, in that same interview I mentioned above, that this the uh, uh, that the biggest appeal of Dragon Ball, you know, is that it's pretty much just a series about fighting, and he doesn't understand why it's so popular. You know, or I think the word he's more looking for being universal. But the thing is, like, anyone can enjoy watching a series about two buff dudes punching the shit out of each other. The same way anyone can enjoy a romance or a slice of life series or a series about cooking or, you know, any, literally anything. And the thing is, like, here's a prime example. It's like, I am a cis hetero dude. And one of my favorite series is A Bride Story which is about women from different walks of life, you know, and their struggles with love and marriage and kind of trying to find, you know, the right relationship and get married off and all that. And their struggles with like, you know, gender expectations, societal norms and things like that. It's one of these stories I absolutely love, but just because I'm a dude, you know, people would assume that, oh yeah, you know, how could you possibly enjoy a story about that? Like, you know, that's, how could that be interesting to you? Like, you know, seeing women struggle with things related to marriage. Like, that's that's not something you are going to struggle with. Like, just because I'm a dude doesn't mean I can't enjoy a series like that. And this, like, one of the unfunniest and most stupidly gendered jokes in One Piece that I've come to absolutely loathe that kind of speaks to this is however, how whenever something that men are stereotypically expected uh, to enjoy more than women, you know, whether it's a robot or a ninja or, you know, the tank or like some kind of machinery or weapon or something, you know, all the men in the series are shown getting like, oh, overly excited. Like, oh my God, I can't believe it. It's a robot. Oh my God, what's it going to do? It's going to transform all oh, things like that. And, you know, and then Oda draws all the women being like, oh, so unimpressed. Like, it's just a robot. What's the big deal? Right? Because ha ha ha, get it? Women aren't interested in science or technology. And that's really just fucking bullshit. And it's regressive. Like, people let people fucking enjoy whatever they like without shaming them for it because you've outdated and regressive notions of gender. Because I know. Uh, again, one of my good friends, a mutual grand thief on Twitter, I think he did this with relation to, uh, I think he was either, I think it was Gundam uh, specifically, uh, where he put out a tweet, you know, saying, hey, I want to show, you know, someone told me that women can't enjoy uh, Gundam and robots and fighting and battle and all that because they don't understand or whatever garbage. And he said, hey, you know, if you're a woman and you enjoy this, uh, either retweet or comment or something like that uh, to show how much you love it, right? And it was getting a lot of, lot of showing of, you know, support from women showing off, you know, all the models and kits and like all the fandom paraphernalia they'd collected because of their love for this series, right? And it was just amazing and awesome to see like how many amazing and interesting people were into the same, you know, fandom and enjoyed the same series that you did. And that's why this fucking idea like you know the heart of boys needs to stop because it is just sex it is sexist and regressive and doesn't really have like a scientific or logical basis in anything except outdated you know gender norms and stereotypes women can enjoy stories about fighting adventure gore horror whatever and men can, in the same vein, can enjoy relationship dramas, romance, baking, you know, cute shit like My Little Pony, whatever. And they should be able to do that without being shamed or excluded for it just because of these outdated norms. And really, like, that's all I want people to kind of acknowledge and start uh, perpetuating is this idea of normalize enjoying things without gendered expectations 
women are honestly like women uh anyone that's non-binary you know except like women anyone that's non-binary anyone that's that doesn't subscribe to the gender binary are honestly really really awesome and fucking cool and amazing so stop blocking them out of places and stop trying to pretend like their stories you know their struggles are not interesting because i guarantee it is vastly more interesting than the struggles of generic cis hetero man i guarantee it so and really like yeah like i said let them into fandom spaces stop blocking them out because it really will immensely like uh immensely is the word i'm looking for immensely what's the word uh, it'll make your experience better is basically what i'm trying to say and you'll meet a lot of cool people if you stop letting yourself adhere to these outdated notions of what kind of stories are interesting and what kind of things people can enjoy I think that's all I really want to say with this video is it's 2020. Let's stop pretending like shit like this still, you know, has any kind of basis in anything. So with all that said, a uh, long rant over, I'll tie up the video here. Uh, I think I went on for long enough. This video is like 40 minutes almost, so think that should be more than enough uh yeah if anyone has any thoughts comments feedback things like that please feel free to either leave in the comments below or uh, hit me up on dms and twitter as well uh, if there's anything in here uh, that you thought was totally out of base as well let me know as well so i can add addendums or corrections if i need to uh but with that said uh hopefully i have a channel update video out sometime tomorrow with the schedule of when read through is going to happen on what days and things like that and just kind of general channel uh, info and updates i uh, expect my one piece reaction around uh, 11 o'clock tomorrow as well i'll post a reminder on twitter as well for anyone that hasn't watched this video or doesn't know uh, and with that uh, this is ash talk to you all later